Hello, it's Morag from Northwest Numbers Limited. Um, I decided to talk about fixed assets today and related topics. So, um, what is a fixed asset? Okay, it's something that you've purchased that's going to last you for more than one year. So, um, basically what we want to do is not push the whole cost of the asset into your profit and loss account in one go. We want, sorry, just adjust the, the phone a little bit. We want to um, be able to charge it to each of the different kind of years that, each of the years that you're physically using the machines. Please excuse me if I put my glasses on and off. Um, if anything comes up on the screen, I need to put my glasses on so that I can read it. Um, but other than that, hopefully I'll be able to take them off. Okay, so um, the typical kind of things that are used as fixed assets, we've got um, we've got uh, buildings. Now we've got build. Sorry. I'm trying to press this wave grant grant so on and I can't. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you I'm rubbish at this. Really rubbish at this. Anyway, here we go. Fixed assets. The kind of things that you would classify as a fixed asset, as I say, is something that you have purchased but you'll be able to use for a number of years. As I said, we don't want to throw the whole cost into your profit and loss account in one year because you because you're getting the benefit of it for over a number of years so the idea is that you can re re release the amounts over its useful life we do that by charging depreciation so I'll go into depreciation in a little bit more detail later on in the video Okay, so the type of things that you would buy and classify as a fixed asset. So there's big things like land, um, but land never deteriorates. So that would never have any kind of depreciation on it. Uh, there's buildings. Typically buildings would be charged, you, you could have tried and release the cost over like a hundred years. Unless it's like a leasehold, then you would release it over the number of years that there is on, left on the lease. Um, most people know about motor vehicles, um, computers, uh, planting machinery. Um, on a farm, you'd have your agricultural equipment. Um, you'd have fixtures and fittings in an office, so that'd be like your desk and chairs, uh, lamps, things like that. I think, I mean, I could go on and on. There's lots of different kind of categories, but those are kind of like the main ones that most folk will come up against. So, as I explained, the full cost, if we if we charge the full cost of a building to your profit and loss account in one year, it would like wipe out everything and be major kind of like loss for future that you'd probably not recover for years. But the, the idea is that you, you want to kind of try and match like the, the kind of usefulness, the, the benefit that you're getting from it with each financial year. So if, as I said, in a building, quite often it's like a hundred years. So what you would do for depre to, to depreciate your building, you would be releasing one hundredths, one one hundredth of the value of your fixed asset into your profit and loss account each year. Now that's, there, there's actually two types of um, depreciation methods that you can use. The one that I just mentioned is called straight line and that's basically you, you divide it by the number of years that you think it's going to be useful and you release one segment, one year's worth in each financial year. There is another method and it's called a reducing balance 
method. Now, again, quite often it's things that, like a building really never becomes n not useful unless it's totally completely derelict and you've never done any renovations or whatever to it. So another way of doing it is what's called the reducing balance method. So what you would do is in your first year you've got your cost, you'd still decide on a kind of rate so you could still, um, you'd still do, I don't know, like let's say a five, a, a, well for buildings it'd probably be something like a two percent. So you would release two percent of the value in your first year. What you do in the second year is you take the difference between your original cost and the depreciation that you did in that first year, that's called your net book value. So in the second year, you would take your net book value and take your percentage off the net book value and put that to your profit and loss account. Then the following year, you would reduce your net book value by the amount of depreciation that you charged in your second year. To get a new net book value, do your 2%, that would be charged to your profit and loss, etc, etc. And it would go on like that. The thing about a, a reducing balance is that it basically never becomes zero value in your accounts. It's There's always going to be some kind of residual value in your accounts. With straight line, you're eventually kind of writing off the actual full, full value of your assets into your profit and loss. With reduced value, you never quite, I mean, it gets to, it can get to really small figures, but you never quite um, get rid of the value in your balance sheet. It's, it's always there. Okay, so that is fixed assets, types of fixed assets, types of depreciation, how you would calculate it. Now, the thing is, when it comes to your, your tax liability, um, and paying the tax man because depreciation is kind of um, well it, it, you, you kind of decide what kind of rates what kind of lifetime etc it's a bit it's a bit arbitrary as far as the ta tax man's concerned they don't allow depreciation as a deduction from your your income in in your tax calculation what they do is they replace replace it with something called capital allowances. Now, again, there are different types of capital allowance. Um, main ones are things like, um, well, a big one that most people would use is writing down allowance. So, so there's depending on the type of asset, the um, the tax man has decided there's a certain rate that you can use and you you release that into instead of depreciation to reduce your profit so there's writing down allowance that's when you're like literally doing it every year and it's kind of been written down in value you do the it, it writes down in value okay there's one called um first year allowance now there are certain assets that you can take quite a big percentage Again, the tax man decides that percentage, but basically you can take quite a big chunk of that asset's cost as a fixed year allowance. And then usually what happens is after that, you're doing some the equivalent of like the reduced, reduced value depreciation, but you're doing it for capital allowances. So basically you would have that reduced value. You've, let's say you've taken 50% of the cost. You've got a 100,000 value it's probably not a building, but let's just say it's a building. And you're allowed a 50% first year allowance. So automatically 50,000 goes back into as a, a, as a deduction in your tax against your income. Then the 50% that's left, there would be a percentage that the tax man tells you you have to use and it, it reduces it on a yearly basis. So that's your writing down allowance. Okay, so right. I have put a little, a few notes just so I make sure that I remember. There's um, something called a small pool allowance. Now that's quite often if you've got um, lots of 
tools or it can also be kind of like pool cars and things these can kind of go into that pool and kind of and basically be set you kind of pretend that it's like one asset but then there are rates of allowance that you can reduce that value by um, there's also annual investment allowance now that's quite often used by farmers for their farm equipment um, and that's quite a specialized allowance obviously there's not that many farmers in comparison to just normal businesses and then there's a thing called balancing allowance or a balancing charge that kind of so what happens is when you actually sell off the asset that you have been claiming capital allowances on when you when you um, when you sell that you kind of compare it with the profit that you've got because obviously they're going to want they're going to want their back aren't they so basically you have a kind of balancing figure that's called a balancing allowance or a balancing charge depending on whether they owe, you owe them or they owe you type of thing that kind of goes into the calculation so I can I mean if anybody's interested please comment below after I got off um, if you want to know more details about the actual more specific about the the types of allowances and the rates and stuff like that I can I can put a paper together that's not a problem and send you it um, so if you're interested in that much detail please do make a comment and I'll send you something out okay um, so hopefully that wasn't too boring and um, it was useful to you so if you find if you if you want me if you want to get in touch with me my email address is accounts at northwestnumbersltd.co.uk um, and I can I, I basically I offer uh, free consultations 30 minutes it's supposed to be 30 minutes it's not always 30 minutes but I try to keep it to 30 minutes free consultation if you want to discuss any anything that you think is a problem with your accounts and records um, I can discuss how potentially I can help you um, and, and give you give you kind of advice on how to maybe do filing or even little things like that I am quite happy to give you give you a heads up and help okay so as I say my name is Morag Hunt and I run Northwest Numbers Limited Northwest Northwest Numbers Limited yes it is and um, I will talk to you soon take care thank you bye